Hi everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips and this is Clay Share Live. Every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Eastern, we come to you live from my studio or wherever I happen to be if I'm traveling. And we share with you a little tutorial, a little demo, some Q&A, and oftentimes a giveaway. So tonight is no exception. We are going to be doing a little tutorial with the Diamond Core Tools newest trimming tools. So this is the newest ones to their line of trimming tools. And I have them here. They are the T9, T10, and T11 and T12. There's four of them. They've got some really funky shapes. So I'm going to share those with you. And we're going to trim a bunch of pots, which I have off to the side. Then we're going to give away to two lucky winners. Well, they get to choose the trimming tools they want. How great is that? And if you've never watched us before and you're just tuning in and you're like, well, what is this? Well, Clayshare is an online school for ceramics. We have hundreds of full-length pottery classes. We have thousands of videos. We also offer many workshops from some of the leading ceramic artists. We do three weekly live broadcasts for you. Plus, there's new classes coming out just about every week. We also have a line of drawing for potters classes, a whole bunch of kilns and maintenance classes, glazing classes, and the business of pottery. And we're working on a new setting up your studio line of classes. So whew, there's a lot going on there. So that's what we are doing. And tonight we're having a really, really fun tutorial. So I threw some pots. I got some that I threw yesterday. They're still a bit damp. I'm going to work with them. We'll see how they do. But I got some I threw last week that I left covered that are a little dry. So I think it's really interesting to try out trimming pots on various dryness pieces. So that's what we're going to do. And I get a lot of people asking me if they can trim their handle pots. And you can. So we're going we're gonna to do that. And I don't have comments on the monitor, just so you know. All right. Here is a vase I threw last week. And we're going to start with that. This will be a this will be a good one. Yeah, if you're asking me questions, I don't have my comments yet. We're getting those up. Folks on Instagram, I see you. There yeah, I see them. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, hey. So uh, we made it back in the nick of time for this broadcast. I had to drive five hours round trip to deliver two newborn baby mice to the wildlife rescue um, organization, to the woman that's taking them off my hands because I am not an expert on saving baby mice. i expert on other things, but not that. So we almost didn't make it back in time, but we're here. So, all right, let's go ahead and line up our piece. Now, if you've struggled with trimming, you know, one of the things that will help you out is if you have concentric circles on your wheel, but when you throw with a bat like this, you don't have those circles. So what you can do is you can get it a little messy with a bit of water, a tiny bit of slip, and you can see just some light circles appear. And that way I can use that as a guide to get that on there. So this is a Raku pot that I made about a week ago. And what we're worried about here is centering the bottom. We don't really care about the top. So what you do is you use your fingernail or a needle tool. And wherever it touches the side of the pot, that's where it's too close. So you don't have to scooch it away. So if we look at, look at it, you can see my line really lets up here. That means I have to move it this way. So this is how I teach all my students when they're just learning the center. And then you smooth that down. And then you check it again and see where you're at. And if you bump it off all the way, you got to start over from the beginning. <laughs> so hey, good, good morning. Some of you are here are good morning. Some are good afternoon. Some are good evening. Uh, Rhonda just got her l, l kiln. That's so exciting. Yeah, thanks. Fan is nice. Um, getting a little little hot spell in the studio. All right. So once you get this on here, you have to hold it still because if not, it, it will go flying off. So you know all that scrap clay we have? You save that scrap clay for many reasons. Making molds, making stamps, 
wedging and just making pots with, you know, little, little houses, little pinch pumpkins, so many things you can use your scrap clay for. And I always use it for wads to hold down my pots. So this is how I learned to trim was you just take wads of clay and use them to hold your pot on the wheel. Probably most of you learned this too. Maybe from me. <laughs> Possibly. So once you get your pot anchored, you don't have to worry about it flying off on you, which is, you know, that's really what we want. All right, so I'm excited to try these new tools. Now, I've used um, the T1 through T8 of Diamond Core tools in the past. Those are their, their other like series. This is the newer series. And out of the tools that are already available, my favorite, and you'll have to excuse the fact that they're messy, is because, you know, I use them all the time, is the T3 and the T7. Um, those are my favorites. And that's the slanted one and the avocado. Those are my two faves. Are we on the front or side? We are uh, a bit of both. Let's do the side. You're on the side. Let's go to the side. So side these, the right. these are my two faves for just regular general trimming, but Diamond Core Tool has these new ones, and I'm going to be using those tonight. So it's going to be good. So you've been experimenting with Georgie's pigments and added slip today. Ooh, added to slip you used indigo. That'll be nice. Indigo will give you a nice dark blue. All right, so the T9. Ooh, are you seeing that? That's pretty snazzy. Now you can also carve with these and they do have some great stuff going on with the handles. This is the T10. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, this is a star, T11, and then the T12. So let me just hold these up to the side camera and Instagram folks, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, show it up. I'll show it to you guys too in just a second. See those? These are pretty cool. So if you haven't used these yet, I'm going to use them right now. Uh, we'll just go in numerical order and we'll start with the T9 and then I'll, I'll work my way up with that. So you just got your first diamond core tool, the L3. Can't wait till it arrives. I love the L3. All right, so this is like a um, claw shape, right? Now I'm using, I'm trimming, I should say, some very dry raku clay just chuck and I thought no no we'll save it for tonight's broadcast because I can really test these tools out if you ever try to trim your pots when they're too dry you'll know it's a struggle and it can be really difficult to do so if you get a trimming tool that allows you to dry pots that are that allow you to trim pots that are too dry then you've got something good I do not suggest trimming dry it just sometimes it happens in life So this is a nice slope. I really like this for smoothing out round forms. This is a very nice, if you ever have a ribbon loop tool, you'll have this kind of a curve on it, like the, the old school ones that aren't very good that come in your basic pottery kit. You know, that's nice. But this side, the little claw, let's see about getting in with that. This is dry leather hard, crazy dry. You know, you can also carve with these tools. Is the Raku clay very groggy? Yes, it is, Judy. It's, um, it is, it is very, very groggy. But this one is the, I think this is the Laguna 250, and it's less groggy than others. It's my favorite Raku clay. And it can go to cone 10. All right, so we're just checking out the side. What about this bit here? Let's see what happens. Let's just do a well. All right, so if you ever plan to do carving on your pot and you want to have a really nice registration line, I don't know if you all can see. Do you see these lines I just put in here? I mean, you could do a bunch of surface decoration as simple as this. 
Where you putting lines in? So now we have a, a very liney pot. But what I think this is going to be great for is, you know, when you have to set your foot, that first line you make, because it curves inward, I think it's going to do a nice little undercut. So that, that's pretty sweet. I want to also try something though. We have this curve. I just want to hold this against the pot and see if it makes a nice con cave curve here. This is a crazy dry pot. So it would be so easy to trim something that was actually leather hard. These tools are self sharpening. You do not need to do anything, just use them. All right, so just holding the profile of the tool up against the pot. I'm going to give you a close up so you can see in just a second. You got to have patience. I'm a person who likes to trim. I know not everybody does, and when I started, I did not like to trim. I was in a hurry. I wanted to make the pots. I didn't want to waste my time trimming. But as I have, I don't know, had more experience, I should say I'm more appreciative. All right, so this could be fun. You could do little concentric circles as your trim on your foot ring if you wanted to. I don't usually do that. I usually like a smooth rim, but I mean smooth foot, but you know what? Your pot, you do what you want with it. So the Brenda, that's such a good question. Will the grog dull the tool? In fact, it's actually sharpening it because they are self sharpening. So it doesn't hurt it at all. And that's why it's great to use it on a piece like this. And so I'm using it this direction, flip it around, use it this way. I mean, honestly, I can trim with anything you give me. I could probably trim with a stick if someone just handed me a stick. But it's really nice to have well-made tools like this that are going to last. Because it makes my job and it will make your job easier too, right? All right, so that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Let me show you that con concave trimming bit. So that was the T9. We still got three more to use, and then we're going to give some away. The number of that tool, the one that is like a claw, is the T9. That's this one here. I think it's really cool. See if I can get the camera to focus. There we, there we go. It is like a claw. I, I, don't, I know they have names other than T9. It might be the claw. Uh, somebody out there look up on Diamond Core Tools and help me out. I didn't memorize the names. All right, so that's the T9. Now let me show you the pot. See, we got this little concave curve going on there. I made all these lines. What do you think of these lines? Those could be fun. And I actually could have taken it a step further and carved in a little bit, almost stepping down the pot as I worked. Hmm. Nice and groggy, just like we like our raku clay. So this will be um, a lantern or a vase, ah, probably a lantern. I'm going to carve into it later. Now, I said I would do a hand-built pot on the wheel. You can trim your hand-built pots on your wheel. You can also trim them, believe it or not, on a banding wheel. So you could just spin a banding wheel and use that if you don't have a pottery wheel and you hand build, but you want a really refined, elegant finish to the bottom. I mean, you can get nice hand built bottoms, right? But sometimes you want a trimming tool. So this is a hand built vase from a slab that I made 
uh, a little over a week ago. And you can see there's my bottom. It's, it's good. It's a little, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. I really normally would just use a sponge and smooth it or my finger and smooth it over. But I would like to really dig in there and get something, something good going with that. So, oh, and the T9, the back of the T9 has this nice little paddle. You could use that as a smoothing tool. You could use it for carving or stamping. I'll let you guys see too. See, it's a little paddle. You've done that. You've done that. See, I, I've never, I don't know if I ever share anything groundbreakingly new. <laughs> Maybe sometimes I come up with new stuff. But pottery has been around for, who, who watched my um, All About Clay class? Who knows? How long's pottery been around? It's a test. I'm not going to tell you. You guys got to guess it. Humans have been making pottery for how many? It's in the tens of thousands of years, just to help you all out. So in that period of time, you know, we've come up, humans have come up with some pretty cool techniques and things in pottery. So the T9 is shark fin. Ooh, I like the name of it. Shark fin with the shark tooth handle. It does look like a pumpkin because it's supposed to be like a gourd. Yeah, that was the, the, it was made that way to look like a gourd. That was session um, three for the Raku workshop that Drew is doing with me doing the making part, like how to make a, make a pot. You just ordered your first Shimpo wheel. Can't wait to try it out. Hopefully you'll learn how to throw. Well, Rahman, you know what? I have a bunch of intro to pottery classes that are free, that are wheel throwing, so check those out. My um, main intro to pottery one, the intro to wheel throwing, is fabulous for beginners. You know, I've been teaching pottery for over 15 years, and a lot of my students are beginners, even though I've taught intermediate and advanced ceramics as well. All right, so let's go to T, let's go to the T10. Ooh, I'm going to love T10. I'm going to love it. Ah, Maggie. Maggie, you got to at least double that. <laughs> yeah. Michael's paying attention. Michael's paying attention. 30,000 years. Although they have found some shards that are older now, they're saying possibly 40 to 50,000. It's crazy. It's crazy to think at that um, 30,000 years of pottery making, and we are the culmination of it. We are, we're it, right? Where's what it has led to today, right now, what I'm doing is what 30,000 years of all humanity that came before me has led to. Kind of cool. Kind of cool to think that something you make today could be around in 30,000 years. That was one thing that I always found interesting when I was a student. The idea that my work would last Although maybe not my student work, right? So I'm just smoothing off a wheel thrown edge. That looks pretty good. I actually want to go back to that shark fin. I feel like this one is going to give me that. This is not a curve. This is a really nice edge, but it's not the curve I want. Hey, Kev, Jack doesn't have water. My little dog's in the studio with me. It's like 110. I've been gone from him all day, and he's not willing to be parted. But he's going to need some water. Or he's going to die. We don't want that. So that did some nice trimming. And if you get an edge that's raised up a bit and you want to put it back down, you can use a white, well, you can use a couple things, a white mud tool sponge. You can use a damp finger, right? And you can compress this rough clay back down in. Or you can use a rib. And I love the mud tool ribs for this as well. So is it harder to trim the raku clay? Libby, such a good question, such a good question. It's not harder. It's because I threw this a week ago Saturday, so 10 days ago. It's been sitting in my studio. So it's, 
it's probably drier than it should be. Now, we got this. What's happening with that? That's crazy cool on the bottom of this one. We're going to have to trim another pot with that. I don't feel that got enough. That didn't get enough air time. Let's move on. So this is just a simple, you know, how to trim a hand-built piece to get a nice little rounded edge. Looks pretty good. I still have to put holes in it if it's going to be a luminary. When am I going to glaze the large maple leaf bowl I made a few weeks ago? It is still drying. I it's still covered with plastic, believe it or not. Um, I probably will bisque that this next week, but since I'm leaving to go to Syracuse to teach a workshop for a week, it won't get glazed till I get back from that. I don't think. And maybe, maybe. Um, I got a lot going on. I don't know if I can get it done before I go away for that. For me to be away for a week is, oh, that's crazy. That's, that's like a lifetime in my, my schedule. All right, let's trim some other stuff. Uh, I've got a cup freshly thrown yesterday, covered immediately. Still nice, nice and soft, but not so soft that it's going to crush. But you can see we definitely have bits that need to come away. You can see the thickness. And so what I like to do is I put my hand inside and I like to feel where the bottom and the wall come together and I just make a little hash mark with my fingernail. See if the camera will, yeah, right there, pick that up. So that lets me know I should trim in that far. And the next thing we're gonna trim, we're gonna use a chuck. So, good times there. You started in 1975 and learned to throw on a stand-up kick wheel, Julia. Awesome. I, I learned on a kick wheel, but not in 75. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I learned to throw on a kick wheel, too. Uh, I still love the kick wheel. I have one. I don't have it set up here where I'm living. It's at my other studio. But I do plan to move it up eventually. Again, I'm just finding the center. And I always teach my students to center this way instead of trying tapping to begin with. Tapping on center is a great technique. And it does take practice, but when you first are learning pottery, there are so many things that you have to keep track of. I, I just don't want to put more pressure on anybody. So if, if you're just learning and you think tapping on center is cool, you're right, it is. But don't put pressure on yourself to learn that until you've got everything else down. That's pretty good. Um, earlier in my career, I would spend a lot of time fiddling with this to get it perfectly centered for trimming. Now, I just want it on so I can do it. So, I don't, I don't worry too much if it's slightly off. Oh, Sam, watching me trim gives you a happy, relaxed feeling. I love to trim. It's very relaxing. Throwing is relaxing. Trimming is relaxing. If you trim clay as dry as that, will it burnish it and affect the glaze? Well, it depends, Dava, how you, how you trim. I was holding the tool at an angle to the pot where it was pulling the clay off instead of burnishing it in. So if you hold, and that's, that's actually a really good thing. Let me grab the tool I had. So the way I'm holding the tool, and we'll use this one as an example, was at an angle, slight angle, so it's scraping clay off of it. If you hold the tool more like this, which you can do, you'll burnish your clay. And we're not burnishing, we're trimming. So that's, that's the difference. You can use trimming tools, like this is one of my faves as well, to trim, and then you turn the blade around and you burnish as well. It can push the grog back down. Sometimes it seals the clay up a bit, just like if you were doing terra sigillata, which we're not doing today. If you all want terra sig, we could do it at some point. All right, so let's just do a crazy trimming motion. I'm just going to see what the profile of this is in clay. All right, so you can see this trims a really nice even band into the clay, which Bands like this, you know, this is a good tool, but these can be great in decorative 
um, pots when you want to do carving or something in between and you need a start and stop place, you could do a band like this at the bottom, a band like that at the top, and then you decorate everything in the middle. So you think about this when you're using your trimming tools. They're not just, they're not just for trimming. So this is like when I first started making pottery, I had a lot of basic trimming tools, and this has a really nice end that mimics those. But it also has this great side profile. All right, do you see how much easier it's trimming on this clay than that raku clay? Like you don't hear anything, it's just smooth, smooth, smooth. So you could just do a bunch of bands, right? If you wanted to trim a bunch of bands, just starting and stopping one on top of the other. And that would make a cool, you see how that could be on your piece? How do I prevent my rims from getting distorted from wads of clay? Well, you want to make sure the, the pot's dry enough. But you'll notice when I pushed the wad on, I didn't push it in. I pushed down. You see? See, I'm pushing down and kind of pulling actually away. So I'm not, I'm not actually even crushing the rim at all. All I'm doing is gently hugging it with clay. All right, I have to use this, this right here, or I cannot stand it one more second. This is that T11. That's like a star. I, I have to put this on something. And this is the thing it's getting put on. Oh, let's do it down here. I want to see what happens if I just let this roll around. Look, look at that profile. Look what I just did. Do you see this? The T9 shark fin you're loving, huh? Yeah, that's a nice one. So this right here, this curve did this right there, which, ooh, I love it. I love that. Now, I'm just going to do a mini version right here. Look at that. That's nice. That's a really nice way to finish the bottom of a cup. Well, this happens to be a cup. I don't know. I think, I think it's pretty good. I may just leave it as is. As she, she says, as she fiddles with it, right? <laughs> Starfish, let's trim. Let's see if we can trim a foot with it. This is what I, I want to know what a tool can do, right? Can it trim the side? Yes. Can it trim the bottom side of a foot? Yes. Can it do my ring that I need to put my foot in at? Yeah. That. Now, can we get the side? Well, let's see. Sometimes, we were talking about you want to trim. Maybe you don't want a flat trimmed bottom. Maybe you want that swirl. There's all kinds of ways you can trim your pot. There's not a right or wrong way. So if you want a swirl, I think the star, this is the starfish they're calling it. Yeah, the starfish. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. We're going to leave it for a minute. Oh, huh. Oh, we might stamp. We might do some stamping. Um, let's see. How big of a band do I need? Hold on. I do a measurement to there. Let's grab the T12 and let's bring this around. I'm going to do a band right there. All right. So now I've set up an area for decoration. Sometimes you might want to have a pot that has just a really beautiful glaze on the top and maybe some busy stuff happening at the bottom, right? So we're going to do that. I'm going to trim this because I like flat bottoms. I like smooth, flat bottoms. Well, sometimes rounded when you smooth them over.
And then that shark fin is perfect. So you don't need all these. You need to find one, maybe two. I mean, we all want all of them, right? Always. But you need to find one or two tools that will do exactly what you want to do in ceramics, right? And I'll tell you that good tools are never a waste of money. Yes, tools can be pricey, but you know, if you want to do this for a long time, it's worth the investment. I would always rather, I removed my wads so my pot had no anchor. I would rather spend more money and get one or two good tools than 10 cruddy tools, right? And, and there's other tools that are cheaper that are not cruddy. I don't mean that to insult anybody out there, but you know, it's always worth your investment. Um, there are companies like Bison Tools, there's, their tools are like 120 or $40 a piece. So these by no means are the most expensive tools out there. When people are like, oh, those are so expensive, I'm like, you've not actually looked at how expensive tools can be, because these are not, they are an investment, no doubt, but they're not, not like, oh my gosh, that's the craziest thing ever. All right, we're going to do a little impromptu stamping. Why not? We're here. I've only got one more pot to carve. We've got to do something with our time, right? So the bottom of this is a triangle. So I'm going to use it. Look how cute that is. And I'm just going to turn it. Stamp and turn. I'm just going to play with shape a bit. You got to support the inside though. If not, you will punch through and break your beautiful pot. And so you see how that, I don't know how the focus is doing on that. I don't know. I've noticed that it's struggling. I think it's my pink bucket. No, you can't have the pink bucket anymore. I feel like the pink bucket is too bright and distracting to the camera. Hmm. Anyhow, you know. So you just take your time and you stamp just supporting from the inside. So this is a, those of you who are doing the August, August Clay Share Challenge, um, right here, we are doing the pattern, right? So this counts as pattern, which was part of our challenge for the month. And so you just keep walking it around. You, I'm using a towel so I don't damage my foot ring too much. The old adage, you get what you pay for. It's in ceramics, I'm going to tell everybody, ceramics is not a inexpensive hobby or profession. It's definitely one of the more expensive ones. There's investments. But, you know, the good thing about that is unlike painters who are always buying tons of tubes of paint and go through paintbrushes pretty fast sometimes too, you'll buy a trimming tool and you know what? Like with Diamond Core Tools, they'll sell you replacement blades. They actually come, I believe the tools come with one extra to begin with. Now, I've never gone through one blade. I've never had to use the replacement blade. So, there. So, we did this little pattern all the way around. How fun is that? Right? And then the bottom, you know, swipe it down. I might leave the little spirally, but what I really like, I really like this. Look at that. It was just a simple cylinder, and that's the bottom we got. I'm going to show the Instagram folks so they don't miss out either. That's cool, right? So it's a cool cup happening. And the stamp's just a little extra bonus, right? Little triangle stamp on the bottom. Triangles are always good texture tools. I got to do something with that one, though. I just want to see what this looks like. I got to see. Yeah, they are comfortable in the hand. 
So this makes a couple little lines if you stamp it in, a little deep. I'm going to have to check Diamond Core Tools and see what their intent is for this. I'm sure they have one. Ooh, but if you hold it, wait a minute, if you hold on its side and just press in a little, you get a U. So you can do some fun repeating texture. I don't know if that's coming across with the back of this. All of their trimming tools are like double, double duty tools. All right, we go. Another thing, and it's kind of a, a going to be a really fun one to trim, because in prime time, which is the broadcast immediately after this, just for premium members, the private broadcast, you guys, we are going to be throwing uh, narrow necked vases, like skinny necked vases and bottles and such. And I threw one a little earlier, and I put it in my chuck. This is a chuck. If you don't know what a chuck is, meet chuck or Charles, if you so desire to be more formal, right? Now, a chuck is just a tool we use to trim things that maybe have delicate rims. So if you struggle with maybe crushing your rims, like was mentioned, you could throw a chuck. And I actually have a class teaching you how to make these. They're really easy. So before you use your chuck, well, you bisque fire it, right? You throw it, and then you dry it, and you bisque it. You're going to want to dip your chuck in water clean water because you need it to be a little sticky, right? It needs to be able to take the clay we're going to put on it and you want it to stick on the wheel. If it's dry, it, it's not going to. All right, so you get it wet. I don't, I don't have much water in my bucket, sadly, but it's going to work. All right, we're going to sit the vase to the side. I'll put you over there for now. And we're going to center Mr. Chuck here. And so you want to center the top right here. So if you throw a whole bunch of narrow necked pieces, you know, you'll trim them all at once. So you'll set your chuck up once and then you just plop them down in. Is it to put the edge to the curve? or Oh, you know what? I think you could be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's right. Um, yeah. You could put this on the edge right of your pot that right there um i don't i don't have the hold on chuck's not in yet but let's let's get it wet first always get your pieces wet before you try to use a tool that's gonna scrape it get that wet too oh you need to fix you need to fix the camera all right let's just see yeah, it's like a rounder, so it like rounds over your edge. You could also use it on your foot ring. It's just, sadly, this won't work because I have my chuck there and I'm not going to move it. But I did use it on the rim, and you could use it on the foot, same way. Hold it on the foot, just like I did on the rim. All right, so it'll give it a nice shape, and I'll do it on that after we're done with this. Okay, take your clay. And now you're going to lock on your chuck. I've seen people take chucks and actually like attach them to their bats. I don't do that. I just take it off. But you could. You could epoxy it on there with some marine grade epoxy that is water resistant. You still got to dip your chuck in water to make the top work, but. Now, if you want to, you know, this is old school. This is how I learned. Um, also, there's great tools. There's Giffen grips out there. There's the Bailey Quick Trim. They're all great. I have both of those. I, I use them rarely to show people how they work, and they are helpful. But my go-to is always a chuck. So you check your pots resting in a chuck to see if they're level. Yeah. Do I teach how to hand build that vase? Uh, no, the narrow neck, well, the narrow neck vase is tonight's wheel throne class. Um, that would be a composite vase, and you're going to have to wait because I'm working on that. That's a later thing. Um, actually teaching composite vases at my workshop in Syracuse in a week and a half. And then after I get back from the workshop, 
you guys, we're going to probably do it here in the studio. All right, so we can sit this in here directly, but if for whatever reason your piece is not sitting snug in there, like maybe your chuck is still too wide, and just go ahead and take a bit of clay. You're going to roll a coil. Yeah, but the narrow necked bases we're doing in a few minutes. And then you just make a ring, like a donut. Think of it as a donut. And we're going to use that to nest our vase in. And that will also help protect the sides even more. Okay, let's grab our vase. Use your Giffen grip to hold your chuck. Oh, Judy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh -huh. Who's Chuck? Hey, Michael. Michael, who, who is Chuck? We always want to know who Chuck is. Um, I'm not sure who the first Chuck is. Just, you know. In, in, so I'll just say in my part of the woods in Vermont, it's Mr. Woodchuck. That's my Chuck. This is wood Chuck because, haha, ha, I know I'm so funny because we have wood Chucks. All right, so this is a beautiful vase and I'm totally going to try a tool out and maybe mess it up, but I don't care. So let's just see how we are for centered. And you can still center it even in a Chuck. Who's Chuck? <laughs> uh, we used to have a good time on Periscope with Chuck, didn't we? Everybody had a Chuck. All right, I'm just going to go in and press this against the side and see what happens when I use it this way. What is the T12 called? Has anybody looked it up for me? Since the T12. That's the next Terminator movie. But um bump come on. So they almost work like a little trimming profile tool, right? Ball point. So it makes a little ball. And it does make a ball, like right there. I think I know what I would use this for. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, texture. Oh, I just had a really great idea. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a little. These pieces were all test pieces. Um, I wasn't invested in any of them. So for me, it's, and I suggest it for you all to do the same thing. Throw pieces you do not have any investment in or hand build pieces if you're gonna use them for anything. I mean, this is, this is true for anything in pottery. Make pieces you're not invested in and play with them. You know, try out different textures, try out different tools, be, willing to sacrifice them and throw them away when you're done. Don't make everything precious. That's the, the most difficult lesson I give to my students. Like they don't, it's really hard to not make everything precious. Because you might never make another one like it, right? Ever. That's the only one like that you'll ever make. No. In pottery, the beautiful thing is if you can make it once, you can make it again. Barring injury, right? put that out there. All right, so I'm going back to the shark fin. This one seems to be my winner of the night. You know, we all have favorites. When you're picking out tools, you need to pick out a tool that's going to work for your way of working. Again, my pot's not perfectly centered in the chuck. That does not bother me. I'm sure it's bothering people out there, but me? You won't see it when it's sitting still on somebody's bookcase, right? And after I carve a bunch of designs in it. 
All right, so it's going to be the foot here. If a clay chuck could chuck clay, <laughs> how much clay could a could could a clay chuck clay if a clay chuck could chuck clay? Yeah, say that. How much clay can a clay chuck chuck if a clay chuck could chuck clay? That's right. And that's because I have a family of woodchucks that live here. They're not pets. They just live outside in the wild, do their woodchuck thing. Which, from the stories I've been hearing from folks, it's pretty destructive. All right, so I'm using the ballpoint here to do this nice little decorative bit on the foot. And then my clay is a bit damp still. Come on, you. So I did that there. And then we're going to carve the rim. No clay babies. <laughs> Did you need to know where Chuck comes from? Uh, you want to share that information? Go ahead, Michael, and I'll, I'll put it across to everybody. And then they, everybody will be wiser. And then you have some fun pottery trivia to go out in the world with and wow your friends at parties. You'll be a hit. All my friends are potters or artists, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Natalie, it's not raining here. No, it's about 100 degrees in my studio, maybe 110, and sunny, sunny, sunny. Yeah. It's the last day, though. This is it. After this, it's cooling off in autumn. We'll be here. This is basically our last day of summer in Vermont. Snow in two weeks kind of liking the way those concentric circles look on the feet. But if you don't like them, take them out. You know, I would take my, my T3, that's my favorite. My favorite one is the T3 out of all of them. Out of every, car, every trimming tool Diamond Core Tool has made. I'll tell you, they're all great. I love the decorative ones, I love the new ones. But this is my this is my workhorse. This is the one I reach for every time, so I have to use it a little bit. Give it some love. It's a gazillion degrees in Massachusetts. I, I hear you. Hey, Jack, how you doing, buddy? My poor dog's just standing there panting at me. Now let's smooth the bottom. Thanks for acknowledging my pot's not centered. You debated on telling me. I always know. So I want everyone out there to know when I'm doing something that's not centered or something's in the way, well, if something's in the way and I'm filming, I don't realize it. But if something's not, if it's not centered, I know it's not centered. And I don't care. Um, you know, these are, these are things that I've embraced. I, I've got other things to worry about than, um, and you do too. Don't worry about it. I, I mean, unless that's your thing. And if it is, you fix it, right? You make it work for you. I'm going to use another diamond core tool that I like a lot. This is the T5. So they have a ton of trimming tools. Like the ones I just showed, the T9, 10, 11, and 12, are their new, more decorative ones. They have their T1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, um, 8 is <laughs> in there too. <laughs> and there's a lot of really, really great profiles and shapes and things. So check them out at diamondcoretools.com. And they're doing 10% off. I think it's just for this month that they've partnered with me. I don't get anything if you buy tools from them, just so you know. It's not like it doesn't, you know. But I can save you 10% off if you use the code, all capitals, DCT Jessica 21 And that'll save you... 10% off everything but the kitchen sink. No, that's the pottery studio sink. 
So here is our little vase, and then you remove the wad, the coil, and you just reuse this. Um, this clay here, don't throw this clay away. We can, we can switch probably back to the front now. Um, there it is. There's the bottom. Yeah, okay, you got the front. So this clay here, don't throw it away. If you are doing a lot of trimming and you have these wads and stuff, just take, take a bag, write wads on the bag. If you don't want to use a clay bag, get a big gallon size Ziploc bag, write wads on that. Keep your wads in a bag in your studio so whenever you trim, you're just using the same wads. If they get too dry, quick dunk in your water and that will rehydrate them and you're good to go. Don't, don't be using your good clay. Don't use up your nice good clay for um, trimming wads. You don't want to do that. There's no need. Save this, but, but don't throw this out because that's such a waste of clay. There's no need for it. All right. Chuck is the original term for an animal's neck. It's still used today in chuck roast. So the term was adopted by people in the 1600s to mean tightening on the neck and during early American times, people were put into chucks when they did wrong. Ooh, the machinist started using the term for anything that can tighten something to work on it. So like if you were put in the stocks, like the stockade or something, you get, you get in the stocks, it's like the chuck. Oh, don't be bad, we're gonna put you in the chuck. Cool, thanks for that bit of history of why we call it a chuck. A Christmas list. <laughs> So you embrace the curve because you always have a bit of, wi of wibble wobble. I, so when I was in college, one of my friends, we were in a, a we were in an intermediate wheel throw. Well, no, it was intermediate ceramics, but it was the first wheel throwing. So at the school I went to, you didn't learn wheel throwing until after you did beginning ceramics. Beginning ceramics was all hand building. Wheel throwing came in intermediate ceramics. And so we were in intermediate ceramics and she could not get centering down and it, I watched her struggle and I was just like, look, it, don't worry about centering, just make something, just make some stuff. I was doing that. I was taking pots home. I was making badly centered, big, heavy pots. Um, you know, don't, don't hold yourself to these impossible ideals. Okay, so there we have this one we trimmed. I am in love with what that star fish can do for a pot, a, a bottom, a pot bottom. Or do we have time? I don't know if I have time to quickly use that. Where are we at? Oh, we've got four minutes. We've got to give away stuff. I don't want to waste your time. All right, we don't have time. But you know where I was going. I was going to use the bottom of that other tool. I'm going to turn this over. All right, you have names for me? Mm -hmm. I would like some names so I can give you guys presents. Ah, how do you know if you're trimming too much and making your piece too thin? So Gina, that's why I marked this with my fingernail. And you ideally want the piece to be the same thickness at the rim as it is all the way through. In some instances you might want the rim a tiny bit thicker. But um, practice, right, when you're trimming, we'll, we'll, because you're going to trim through a few pots. And that'll help, help you learn. And it's what I said, don't make things too precious to begin with, right? And even if you've been making pottery for a long time, well, you guys can see the winners. Um, even if you've been making pottery a long time, still take some time, give yourself permission to play, sit down at the wheel or hand build and make some pots that have no destination. It doesn't matter what you do to them. They're just for you to explore and have fun. Alrighty, so it must be your turn for the giveaway. Well, we're gonna find out, ready? <laughs> First winner of the Diamond Core Tools Trimming Tool Prize, and you get to pick out the trimming tool yourself, is Deb Gardner. Deb Gardner, congratulations. You, my dear, have won yourself uh, your choice of Diamond Core Tools Trimming Tools. I know, right? So you get to pick. Congrats. I'm just going to hold the new shapes up. New fancy shapes with fancy ends with lots of possibilities. And then the second winner of the Diamond Core Tools Trimming Tool Prize. And again, if you missed it, the way you enter our giveaways, go to clayshare.com, sign up for our emails, you're entered. If you're a premium member of Clayshare, you're automatically entered, so you don't have to do anything. Just, just show up, that's it. Yay, Deb, oh my goodness, you won, congrats. 
Yay! I'm glad you're here and you get to see it. So I don't, I don't know which one you should get. Um, you know, it depends what you're going to do with them. There's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff happening here. Okay, the second winner of tonight's Diamond Core Tool Prize is Sherry Chauvin. Sherry Chauvin, congratulations, my dear. You too have won yourself some Diamond Core Tools trimming tools. You get to pick. So we will email you all and we'll contact Diamond Core Tools and we'll get you guys connected and you'll get your tools. So this whole month has been sponsored by Diamond Core Tools. Um, next month we have a fabulous giveaway. I don't know if I'm going to tell you yet. I think you're just going to have to wait till next month to find out. Next Wednesday night I'll be giving something away. There'll be prizes every Wednesday. Um, you just sign up again for our email list to be entered in the giveaway and uh, it's something pretty spectacular that you can't even get right now. How's that for a leading, a leading question? <laughs> so, all right, how do you make the bottom flat in the chuck? Um, what exactly are you meaning? Trimming? Uh, you just trim it like that. Yeah, you just trim it like you normally do. So it's easy. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Again, a huge thank you to Diamond Core Tools for being this month's sponsor. I'll see all my premium members in just a few minutes.